See, God looks at us in our current state and sees us in our intended state. Your breakthrough may not come the way somebody else got their breakthrough. Your breakthrough may come a totally different way. God has given you the victory and they call it the triumph is yours. Health is a mindset. Wealth is a mindset. Prosperity is a mindset. In the book of Matthew chapter 4 verse 17, Jesus comes and introduces himself to the world. From that time, Jesus began to preach and to say, repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. His comments didn't make much sense to those who were listening because what he talked about was really not what they expected. This was the first public statement of Jesus introducing his inaugural message. And he began to preach. Did you see that? From that time, Jesus began. Say began. began. So if there's no other time, this is when he introduced right. his message. Yeah. He introduced himself. And the Bible said he began, Jesus began to preach yeah. and to say, repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Heaven has arrived. He was talking to a community that was expecting a religious message. They expected him to come to solve their religion and he disappointed them. I'm glad he did. This same message will upset religious people because it challenges the status quo. It challenges whatever is not in alignment to God's kingdom rule and reign on earth as it is in heaven. Matthew 21 verse 22. And all things whatsoever you ask in prayer believing you shall receive. See that? There's no restriction. <clears throat> All things. Yes, you got to see this. In the kingdom now. You got to understand the kingdom of God and how it functions and operate in prayer. And all things whatsoever you ask, and all things whatsoever you shall ask in prayer, believing you shall receive. There's no restriction, just one condition. Believing. Faith. John 15, verse 7. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, you shall ask what you will and it shall be done unto you. The condition here is my word abide in you. Because when his word abide in you, you're not going to be asking anything crazy. In other words, we're going to pray according to God's word. And then the third scripture is 1 John chapter 5, verses 14. And this is the confidence that we have in him. That if we ask anything according to his will, he heareth us. Again, there's a condition that is attached. to It is according to his will. So if you take these three passages together, you'll find that the scriptures lets us know that prayer is unlimited. Unlimited. But conditions are threefold. One, faith according to God's word, which is according to God's will, and you put them together. Because God's word reveal God's will. 
And we know that when we pray according to God's will, we get what we pray for. Now say God's will. God's will. Now that's the key. We've got to understand the will of God. The will of God is the purpose of God. And in Matthew chapter 6, we find it. What Jesus teaches his disciples when they came to him, the Lord teaches us how to pray. We watch you. You got answers every time you pray, every time you go to the Father, every time you speak, something happens. We want to, we want to, we want to pray like you. We want, we want to learn how to pray. We want to do the same thing. So Jesus takes him aside. He says, pray after this manner. Pray after this manner. Watch this. After this manner. He's not saying that you pray the same words there. Say, pray after the manner. Here's the manner. Number one, our Father. Our Father. See that? There's a relationship. He addresses the Father, which are in heaven, who is in the original country, which is the kingdom of heaven. He addresses the relationship that we must have with God as our father. Our father is God. Those that are born again by the spirit of God, you have relationship. Number one should be with a father because a father wants a relationship with his sons and daughters. Out of that relationship, we know that the Father's will is best for us. So whatever the Father has for us is what we want. Sometimes we go to God and we're asking God to do certain things that are not in line with his will. And we wonder why it is not happening. But the scripture says if we ask according to his will, we have those things. I'm telling you to come to pass. Stay with me now. First, he addresses after this manner. Therefore, pray ye our father, which is in heaven. Hallowed will be thy name. In other words, your name is hallowed. Your name is reverence. Your name is 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 respected. We reverence him as king. Most part in the church today, we have lacked the reverence. Of who God is. He says hallowed be thy name. Your name is hallowed. Your name is holy. Your name is sanctified. You see this is the consciousness and awareness. As we come to God in prayer. To have our prayers answered. There's an approach to this whole thing about prayer. And getting your prayers answered properly. It's a relationship with God. Next. Now here's the next line. He says what? Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth or in earth as it is in where? In heaven. That's God's central purpose. That's his will. And if we can get in alignment with his will, no matter what we ask and we're in harmony with congruent with the will of God, whatever you ask shall be done. This is a model prayer. Uh, it's not Jesus' prayer, so to speak, but it's a pattern prayer. And the reason why I say it's not the Lord's prayer, because in that prayer, there's confession of sin. You read on down and you see it. Forgive us our sin. No trespass. Well, in him, there is no sin. So if it's the Lord's prayer, then that means that sin there's a factor here. But it's not the Lord's prayer. It is the disciples' prayer. That he's teaching a model prayer of how we can get our prayers answered. Everything that God does is directed towards seeing the establishment of his kingdom on earth. Until we make that our priority, we're not really aligned to the will and the purposes of God. Prayer is not a way for you to get God to do what you want. Prayer is a way for you to become an instrument for God to do what he wants on earth. And when we're in alignment with the will of God for our lives, 
then our lives change and we begin to experience a quality of life called the kingdom life on earth as it is in heaven. And when that happens and you begin to be aligned with God's purpose, you're going to pray prayers that are irresistible. That means there will be no power, human or satanic, that can be able to resist the outworking of your prayers. Clap your hands and give God some glory. I'm telling you right now. Catch it. Taking my time in this. And Jesus said, pray, your kingdom come, your will be done. We want what you have there on earth. Here's the second essential requirement that you renounce your own will when it contradicts or conflicts with God's will. And in prayer, you say, Lord, we embrace your will without any reservation. The priority of God is his kingdom. Man's principal problem in life is identifying what is his most important problem. So mankind's principal need is identifying what is his most important need. So God has reduced man's principal need down to two components. The kingdom of God and the righteousness of God. Those two areas, we see that's going to be picked up in Matthew chapter 6 and verse 33. He said, but seek ye first the kingdom of God and his what? Righteousness and all these things shall be what? Added unto you. Wow. What does the word seek mean? It means to what? To pursue, to study, to explore, understand, learn, consider. Desire to know, a passion for, diligent dedication to, preoccupy oneself with. That's a divine command. That's not an option. He says, seek. That's not a suggestion. He says, seek. Then he tells you the priority. First. First means priority, principle, before all others, most important. Highest value on, above everything, established as primary. What is the most important to God? He says, here's the focus. The kingdom. The kingdom. That's your divine focus. Kingdom, it means royal government. It means dominion. Kingdom means dominion. It's made up of two words. King, domain, king's dominion, king's rulership, king's reign, God's government, God's rulership, God's dominion over the earth, God's will executed, God's jurisdiction, heaven's influence, God's administration, God's impact on the earth. Jesus said, he tells us, our father knows what we have need of before we ask him. So prayer is not bringing a shopping list to God. Prayer is not telling God what you want all the time. See, prayer is seeking first the kingdom and praying the will of God on earth as it is in heaven. He said, if you seek first my kingdom and my righteousness, all your daily needs, every need you have need of, you don't have to think about what you're going to eat, what you're going to drink, what you're going to wear, where you, you know, how you're going to live. He said, listen, he said, this is what it is. What I want you to do is get your focus adjusted. Yeah. Yeah. He said, the world seeks after these things. The Gentile seeks after this thing. Look at third, verse 31. He said, therefore, take no what? Thought saying, what shall we eat? What shall we drink? Or wherewithal shall we be clothed? And they ask, those are basic needs. He says, watch this, verse 32. He says, for after all these things... The Gentiles seek the world systems. Now, are those things wrong? Are they bad? No. He said, but don't seek after them. 
Don't pursue after them. Don't go after that. You see, you never chase money. Money should be chasing you. See, in the kingdom, you reverse what the world says. In the kingdom, you give. In the world system, you take. We're just going to keep, we're going to keep hitting this, keep hitting it because I'm hammering something here because once it breaks through in your thinking, the first word that Jesus gave for the kingdom, he said, what? Repent. The word repent, the Greek word is metanoia. It means to change the way you think. In other words, you can't believe yet until you repent. You repent, then you believe. Some people are trying to believe God for healing. They're trying to believe God for healing, but they're walking around with unforgiveness. You got to repent of unforgiveness and denounce that first. Then let's believe for healing. You say, I want to believe God to prosper me in my life, but, 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 but I'm not even tithing. I'm not even honoring God. I'm not giving. So that needs to be repented. You get to change your mind. Then believe God for, for the supplies to be, the, to be there. He said, for after all these things, what things? What you're going to eat, what you're going to drink, where you're going to live, and all these. He said, after these things, all the Gentiles seek. For your heavenly Father knoweth that you have need of all these things. So you don't have to bring him a shopping list. He already knows what you have need of. So Jesus said, this is what you do. You don't operate like the world system. Now you're going to shift your thinking, shift your focus. He says, take your eyes off the natural and put it on the spiritual.